the second the second item is documentation. And I know you work with the students with this. And remember that, so just to give you some context, it's slowed down a little bit now because of the pandemic. But when I was doing interviews and in general, you know, a consular officer is interviewing a couple hundred people a day, okay, <laughs> at least. And not all of them are students. It's not like they say, okay, Thursday, all the student applicants come. No, it's like tourist visa, tourist visa, and you get, you get a student visa. Now, what you don't want to do is throw a bunch of papers at them okay and expect them to figure out what it is all right now i know that they see student visa applications all the time yeah. right yeah. but the reason that you know they're working with one key visa the reason that you know i'm i'm helping as well is so that they stand out okay if you want to just do good enough then that's not going to work for you all that well in college either all right yeah. you want us to so when you present your documents, prepare some kind of a, either a cover letter or at least a list of what the documents are. If it's just a bunch of papers in a pile, okay, generally in another language, which yes, there's translations, but if you have everything organized, I can't tell you how many times I've issued a visa to someone who just came in with a super organized application because that has a definite impact. Now, I'm, obviously, if they're completely unqualified, then it's harder. But nine times out of 10, somebody who took the time to prepare and do things like, you know, have all their uh, documents, like, you know, a list of all the documents and then tabs of the documents and things like this. That's somebody who takes it seriously, one. Two, they're organized. And, and three, you know, they, they want to succeed. Those are very good qualities for a college student. Right. Somebody has a bunch of papers. Half of them are like folded over. One has a coffee stain on it. <laughs> the other one has a very poor translation. That shows that they don't care that much, that they're just you know, going through the motion. So when you do documentation, you want to try to make it as simple for the consular officer to understand what it is as possible. And you, I'm sure you go over what documents they actually need with them. I mean, sure. with the sure. yeah. Yeah. I'm not going to get in. To be honest with you, that we obviously talk to students all the time about preparing, well, organization when it comes to the documents. Because as you said, and this is obviously, as you say, it's a first-hand experience, you know, throwing a bunch of documents at a rate that you're doing interviews, 100, 200 interviews per day. Imagine how many people, everybody coming in and just throwing, you know, documents and like, you got to go through it. It gets, again, frustrating, right? So you want to oh, ensure you want to see people who are, number one, as you said, prepared to organize and we'll get to the third one, to kind of come in front of you to tell you what they want to do and then obviously show you whatever they have in order to show their qualification. Right, absolutely. I mean, if, if, if you do that, that's... Absolutely. It's a table of contents. It's a table like it's like a table of contents. And then you have, you know, a chapter like a tab or a page separating the different uh, documents. I can't tell you how helpful that is and how much it's appreciated. OK, by the consular officer, because they're going through, as you said, thousands of these applications a week, thousands. And do you think they like going through each and every paper trying to figure out what it is? Now, let me just say something about documentation as far as I hear a lot from clients. I hear a lot of people say the consular officer barely looked at my documents. All right. And we're going to get into why that's an important point in the next section, because there's something that's even more important than documents, more important than prep. Well, not more important than preparation, but as important as, pre as preparation. And we'll get into what that is. But if a consular officer is not looking at your documents, we'll talk about why that is. Uh, but the last thing on documentation, because uh, Ashkan and his, his, his uh, team are going to help, you know, make sure you know all the documents that you need to have uh, and help prepare them. You need to, again, I said it in the first uh, th point on preparation, on the documentation, it's the same thing. You need to know what's in your application materials. If you're presenting documentation, you don't know what you presented. You're just a bunch of stack of papers that somebody at some, you know, tourism office whatever those are, um, uh, gave you and said, give this to the consular officer. That is fatal, okay? You know what the consular officer one-way ticket to make sure you never get a visa again? Tell a consular officer that you didn't know that this said this on your application, all right? But you signed it anyway, okay? 
you're very lucky if that officer doesn't, you know, cancel whatever visas you have and then make an entry in your record that shows that you, uh, you know, falsify that information. Okay. That is not an excuse. Uh, we talked about this a little bit. When you're interviewed for a student visa, you're going to be interviewed as an adult, not as a kid. So you're responsible. If you sign that document, that means you know what's in that document. The, if you tell the consular officer, oh, you know, this guy at the, at the whatever, I'm not going to say any, but, you know, people who helped me yeah. filled this out. I don't know what they put. They said that I'm married and I'm 37. I'm actually 19 and I'm single. <laughs> I'm using an extreme example, but, yeah, yeah. you know, that's very important. No what is in your application materials. It's not acceptable to the consular officer to, for you to say, I didn't prepare these, but I si I just signed them. Okay, that's, uh, you're very lucky if the consular officer doesn't turn around and make it so you can never get a visa again. Yeah. All right, and if they just say, sorry, refused and give it to you, they're doing you a favor, okay? Because at that point, you're showing that you, imagine what you're saying to the person. I signed this document. I didn't even look at it. Yeah. How, how much? How, how can you say that's a, a serious student? I know that some of the stuff can be complicated and some of the stuff can be tedious. And, you know, you got a lot of stuff going on as a student and you're trying to get into school and you're doing all the other things that you need to do. But the point is, you know, we're here. What Ashkan is doing is helping you so that these things aren't complicated and tedious and so that you understand them. So make sure you, you, you know what's in your application material. So documentation is the second point that we- That's great. It, and I'm sure very, as frustrating as when someone just says, oh, I didn't know I should have this document or I didn't know I should bring this, right? That could also be pretty frustrating for the visa officer. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'll tell you something. People always ask me, and it's not just with student visas. They say, should I bring this? Should I bring this? Should I bring this? Look, all right, if it's organized and you know what it is, don't bring like a box like this. But if you have something related to your college study or you have something related to your high school grades or performance, or you have something related to the course of study that you're doing that you find interesting, anything that's related to what you're doing, mm -hmm. Bring it. What are you saving it for? What the next visa interview? Bring it if you if you think it could be related. But all of the key items, for sure, you know, Ashkan and his team will be helping you to make sure that you have all of those ready.